Hey everyone, this is Hector Arano from 24K. I made a uh, day two at Nationals with uh, Trap Eldledge, the Yu Gi Oh! Championships. It was a great event. Um, I'm doing uh, this video for three people for the profiles. I'm doing it for Slim YGO. Shout out to you, man, uh, for letting me do this profile. And then um, Papa Goat. Papa Goat also is going to be getting this. And also, on my way to the airport, someone messaged me, like, hey, can I get your profile? I was like, man, I'm on the airport and this and that. Like, it was, it was kind of hectic in the DM and everything. But um, I'll, I'm also going to send it to him in Cyberhorn92. So make sure you guys, uh, you guys make sure you guys subscribe, follow, notifications, hit all that stuff for them and support them because, you know, what would be Yu Gi Oh without them, YouTube creators, man? They help out a lot. I also want to give shout outs to. Um, my boy behind this camera right here, Abel. Um, he was, uh, I, I roomed with him, it was a great experience. Uh, it was a, a great uh, support system throughout the way, motor made me keep going when I was getting a little knocked down. He made me uh, keep moving forward. And he also bought me this one great burger for making day two. So shout out to that. Uh, my team, 24K, of course. Um, anyone that let me borrow cards, you know who you are. Um, yeah, it was just it was just great. Uh, local scene, TCG, Collective Exchange, shout out to all you guys, man. It was just a great experience. But yeah, without further ado, let's show you this profile we got going on here. Um, I did uh, lose in day two to Alter Guys, but I only saw one Alter Guys card, which was Faker. I saw him strike it, and then he had the Mice of the Land, Mystic Mind. I outed that. He went Metaverse, another Mystic Mind. I outed that, and he hard drew the third one. So I, I didn't have enough time to like literally out all three of them. Um, I, my deck outs Mystic Mind, but it doesn't out three of them quickly enough in time in order for me to win i had an inspector border up with a bunch of like gold. i had a game and i just i couldn't do anything but um yeah let, let's show you the profiles real quick oh uh, what place did you end up getting after day two so uh, i um and round 11 i'm like you know what let's just go for this top 100 it's my first nat i just want to get top 100 and i ended up getting 88 so i was one point away from the top 64 but it's okay um, i'm really happy with uh the 88 for my first nat it's not bad all right so let's get to the, the deck profile Alrighty, so my spells, I played the one called by the grave. A lot of Eldritch players do not play called by the grave because it can get hand trapped, but I just think it's just a great card overall. It's so utility, it's that one for a reason. It's a, it's offensive, it's defensive. So I just think it's great. I played two prosperities. Um, originally, I was only on three extravagance, but the reason I ended up doing the two prosperities is because in games two and three, extra, I don't care about drawing two. I care about drawing my side. So this one helps me dig six cards deep. Um, if they let this resolve, and then you see a lava golem or any or a judgment when I'm going first, that's just it's just great. Like that's what I need. I don't care about drawing two, but in games one, I need card advantage. So this is why I did two. Um, also, if you go extra and they ash it, you still get to prosperity if you draw both of them. So it's okay. That is my spell count. My monsters was Lord of the Heavenly Prison. Two of those, great card. I don't want to see three of them though. And two of the Heavenly Lord. Lord of, two of the Lord of the Heavenly Prison and two Eldritch, the Golden Lord. Um, I was on three. Um, I was siding then a third, and then we ended up cutting it completely, just theorizing and just seeing it. I was like, it's not enough. It doesn't justify to play three, so I only did the two. Uh, for my traps, the one Golden Land Forever for the uh, Eldritch traps, two Hawk Carol, two Diddy Crow, three Conk, three Sanguine, and that is my trap lineup right there it was the three three two one um this was so good so good it was probably the best it was the best eldritch card um not named sanguine so that is my golden lands and sanguines um my floodgates i chose to play two rivalry two goes in the reason i went for the rivalry and the goes in is because um this also hurts Flunder East and Sword Soul, but this, this hurts a lot of the other decks um, that are adventure based. So if they have the adventure package, I don't want to get Drake. I don't want them to get to a Draco back. So it just kind of stops it. And it's, it just kind of shuts down some of the matches. It's also great against one of my bad matchups, which is Despia um, and Branded Eldritch. So this kind of helps me with that. The generic ones is three skill drink and three summon limit. So I ended up playing uh, three, six, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 floodgates. I was on 12. Um, I had two, there could be only ones. Um, Ulysses Espora from the team, he's like, you know what? I don't think there could be only one is the move. 
little cutting it. It ended up working out. I didn't miss it. Honestly, it goes into the same thing, but it, it, it also does good against the venture package. So it was good. So I played 10 floodgates. The no card. I played three solemn judgments. And those are oldies right there. Yes, sir. I had to I had to say no in style, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh I the, my three no cards, three solemn judgment. Um a lot of people say they side judgment, but a lot of people were remaining one harpies feather duster. I don't want to be game one in control. I won the die roll and be in position to win and then get harpies when I'm because I'm not meaning judgment. I don't I don't see it. Um that was a three judgment. I played my going second board breakers in case I lose a die roll were one dogmatic of punishment. Three torrential tribute, because it's slightly better. Three solemn strike, because you know, solemn strike plus a punishment, solemn strike plus a torrential, or solemn strike plus a rivalry or a goes in can break a board. Um, and the other card that I was also doing to go second in my mean, I was on triple lava golem right here. So it was great. This is the way I can do the die roll and I'll still have a chance. Um, there was a great interaction that I do want to show you guys that happened a lot. I would go extravagance. I have six cards in my hand. One of them's a lava golem. So I set five and still have a lava golem for the follow-up in case they break it. So it was pretty cool. Another way is if I go, um, if they go first, I get to lava golem them. And then I set my rivalry of the, rivalry of the warlords where my goals in. And then they're just pretty much stuck with the lava golem there. So as long as I have a golden ass to defend myself, etc., they're just getting burned to death. And yeah, it was definitely fun. It was definitely a weird call to play three lava golem, but um, you have to be different, right? In order to try to get up there. So that was that. It was a 42 main deck count. I'm gonna go into the extra deck. Uh, two platies. This was so good. You guys wanna know why? Because I lava golem them, and then I go to the golden ass. I bounce the lava golem. And then I lava golem again, and then I bounce it again. I actually did this. I got to go against Cody Angelov, one of my favorite duelists of all time. And I was, I think I lava golem like two to three times in one duel with one lava golem, the same lava golem because of ladies. So this was really good. Um, Prosperity target, I didn't really use this. Uh, the lead, the lead with the Dora, the two Gustav Max, these came up really good. Weird rarity switch up, but it's all right. The one Sus, just in case, never really came up. Most of these are prosperity targets. The one that did come up though was the Pleiades, the Lina, uh, Golina, summon Chicha, Golina, summon your Golden Lord. Pretty good. Um, the one Phoenix, the Link Spider for your Golden Lands. Three, ns, ns, ns. the three Entes right here. Uh, one of my favorite cards for the punishment. Uh, I banish usually two of Prosperity or in case the extra it was the other one. And then my tech was the Anima. I will get to why I played Anima in a bit, okay? I gotta show you guys the side deck for that. So now for the side deck. Um, my two ofs, two anti-spell fragrance, right there. Uh, two borders. This was so good against Flunder, this is so good. Um, some players can bash for it. Some players can let you know how good this was. Two nibs right here. Uh, and it was just great. Um, the reason I played this one other card over the three nib, um, I'll get to it in a second. But I feel like nib doesn't resolve. It's still really good, but it doesn't resolve most of the time. Yes, it does trade off the Griffin and the Baron Negate, but I still want my cards to resolve, which is why I wasn't a big fan of keeping three of them. Um, a card that was able to resolve every time because they didn't get to Griffin by that time was spicy tech i was citing three genome the no materials um <laughs> this is just a funny i was probably one of the only players on this card um uh, marincess linkwa boom out no material they go branded fusion the first one they summoned um uh, little the Abion. i get the magazine stuff boom no material there um when they got the adventure package um I, I usually try to, like when they go the the, no, the special summon off e telly to get the, you know, Punk, when they to pay the 600 add on, I usually know the material that they haven't gone to the Griffin yet. So it, it was just really good. Uh, Dragon Link, I didn't get to play Dragon Link, but it was also applicable in Dragon Link. Um, Moye, summon token, no material. Like it just came up, it, it was really good. I 
wouldn't play it in like a local or regional, but I definitely say it was a great call for a national event or a YCS. So it was a three new material. Anima, level one. Three drills, Anima, level one. Drill was great, uh, no material was great. And then I play the three token collectors because I hate uh, Draco back. And then uh, Sword Soul, they just pretty much lose. So I played those right there. Um, but yeah, I ended up doing, I feel like I did great. Uh, I lost to three Mystic Mine in like the span of four minutes. So I can't do anything about that. And then my other loss, the guy was playing Denko Seca. I said four or five and he just normal Denko Seca. I didn't open up the judgment. And even if I open up judgment, if I judgment a Denko Seca, it just feels so bad because like, it just, it just not. Like I was not gonna win that duel. So I was not gonna win that match. But um, yeah, I ended up going eight and three. And um, shout out to all you guys, everyone that have been supporting the 24K. And then make sure you guys support them YouTube channels, man. All right. So with that being said, why did you pick um, Pierre Eltledge instead of Brandon Eltledge? Um, one, I feel like you have to be slightly different than the, the rest if you want to get farther. So I feel like everyone's going to be on Brandon Eltledge. Two, I was... I was testing it and then I wasn't really loving the build. Like it's really, it, it is really good. I, it does have more gas, but I've just, if you guys don't know me, uh, I'm very heavy on control. Like if I can just focus on one thing and just control the opponent, uh, I feel like uh, I can take advantage and um, and just capitalize better than if I was playing Branded Eldritch. So I definitely think I made the right call. Uh, the losses that happened, I, I don't, I can honestly and openly say I don't think I really misplayed. I think um, it was, it's unfortunate, you know, when people uh, open up Denko Seca or have three Mystic Minds, like, available to them. So, it, it happens, but um, it was fun. I had, I had a great time. Um, and, yeah, time to be, time to get Sprite going now. I figure out how to beat them, boys. But, um, yeah, thank you guys, everyone, for watching.